What's up, Graham? It's Max here. I want to tell a little story about how YouTuber Graham Stefan stole from me and how we're going to settle a little bit of internet beef. So here's the story. As you know, the crypto Shiba Inu is everywhere in the news. People are making billions of dollars off of relatively small investments. Everyone is excited or at least a little bit fascinated by crypto doggy coins right now, and the appetite for this content is unquenchable. And being a finance YouTuber myself with a focus on crypto, of course, I needed to report on Shiba. And the same is true for basically everyone in finance. Today, I want to talk about SHIB. Shiba Inu is one of the only coins making gains. Hype for meme coins, both Shiba Inu and Dogecoin up huge. People want to hear the story from their favorite channels, so videos are made. By default, videos on this topic can only be so different from one another though. Everyone can have their own style, but the facts are generally the same. Personally, I try to go above and beyond in my research and presentation to stand out. However, again, content can only be so different. One thing that can differentiate us though is the title and the thumbnail of a video. I like to think of a video video as a product, which means the title and the thumbnail are the packaging for that product. The nicer the packaging, the better the product performs. After doing YouTube for a while, you realize how important these things are. When you come up with a great piece of packaging, you really cherish it, a great title and thumbnail. So what happened? I published a video on Shiba with what I thought was a good title, Shiba Broke the Internet. And an even better thumbnail. I spent a lot of time on that thumbnail. Now, of course, I know the phrase broke the internet is nothing new, and most art is inspired to some degree by other art. I'm Almost everything is a derivative of something else. It could not have happened unless you had a camera. Either way, I posted this video and it was performing quite well. I was, I was feeling pretty good about myself. Then a couple hours go by and I get a notification ping on my phone. Graham Stephan posted a new video. And what is the video titled? Shiba Inu just broke the internet. My first reaction, honestly, I was a bit sad. Everyone knows what it's like to be the underdog, you know, looking up to the big guys. When I started my YouTube channel, Graham was the biggest finance guy and I'd watch all of his videos and just absorb information. Then when I saw that title, it gave me that kind of underdog feeling again, like, ah, you know, I just pulled an all-nighter making this video, now it's just gonna get buried. And you can see how I felt by my comment on this video. I was, I was a little bit hurt as my initial reaction. And I figured that comment would just get lost, but Graham actually responded and he was very nice about it. He said, ah oh man, dude, no joke. I promise, total coincidence. Came up with it while brainstorming with Jack. Jack is Graham's number two. Inevitably, there's gonna be some overlap between ideas, but great minds think alike. First off, I have to applaud Graham's communication skills here. You know, spinning the response with plausible deniability and ending it with a compliment saying great minds think alike is honestly a genius way to diffuse a potential situation. Situation. This man's speech stat is maxed out, I'm telling you. Now the question is, do I believe him? Was there some parallel thinking here, or did he see a good title from a smaller channel and say, you know what, thank you, I'll be taking that, and use it for his own? No, I believe him. I totally believe him. Despite getting, you know, those initial tinges of sadness when I first saw the video in his title, it only took a minute before, you know, a more rational Max took over and I realized, you know, it probably was just some kind of coincidence. But again, this video isn't over with yet. Just, just wait until the end of this video. So first, let's talk about YouTube and why this happens. Like I mentioned, the phrase break the internet is nothing new and I claim no territory to it. You know, Kim K made it popular in 2014 by showing some cheek online, but even that wasn't the first use. It was internet slang for going viral since at least 2012. In 2010, it was used to refer to an old person who doesn't know exactly how to use a computer. And then before that, the term was actually literally used for breaking an internet connection to a device in the mid 1990s. So so the phrase is at least 25 years old and no one here should get complete credit for using it. And to be honest, there is very little completely original content, period. Almost everything is a derivative of something else. The problem is on YouTube, your resources are limited and the amount that you make in ad revenue is not proportional to the work that you put in, at least in the short run. I could spend the exact same amount of time on two videos. If one gets a million views, I could make $10,000, or if it gets 30,000 views, I could make a few hundred dollars. This means YouTubers are all incentivized to do what's working instead of taking risks and being creative. And this is why you'll notice periods of times where title styles and especially thumbnails will all look alike. And this is almost always because someone did it, it worked well, it stood out, and then a trend follows. At first, someone looks like a copycat for copying someone else's and then it turns into a trend and then it goes out of style. And what's funny here is what starts as a novel idea that works well ends up getting overused and performs worse over time. And this is a reason why old classic movies sometimes feel cheesy because they were actually among the first to do something that later becomes cliche so then when you watch it later it feels overdone. You talking to me? 
And this is why so many YouTubers make thumbnails and content that looks exactly like Mr. Beast. And more recently, so many YouTubers are recreating Ryan Trahan's thumbnails, which you've probably seen all over the place. It's simply making the safe bet as a YouTuber. Everyone, myself included, are guilty of making a version of existing content. Sure, you know, some content creators just blatantly steal or copy without adding more value, but most are taking a spin on an idea. And on top of this, there's another mechanism here at play. Both Graham and I spend our days creating content for YouTube specifically. Doing this every day for years gives you an intuition of what works and what doesn't work in terms of title and thumbnail. Because of this, we both have similar databases of information floating around in our heads. This means we're far more likely to come up with the same ideas. In fact, I would be willing to bet that if we were given a topic and asked to come up with 10 title ideas, we'd probably have two or three that were nearly identical. And this is actually so common that there's a term for it in science called multiple discovery or simultaneous invention. And this is where scientific discoveries or new inventions are stumbled upon by multiple people who have no connection to one another whatsoever. So meaning as a species, we'll often go 200,000 years without figuring something out, and then two people will happen to discover it at the exact same time. How wild is that? This happened with calculus. Both Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz formulated it at the exact same time. This also happened with oxygen. At least four people are credited for discovering it independently. Until these guys came around, we were all just breathing stuff. And then four guys discovered oxygen independently. As weird as it sounds, it's actually not that odd when we look at how our brains work. There's something called recombinant conceptualization that says that new concepts in our brain come from crossing pre-existing concepts and facts. And this is why it's much easier to slightly improve an invention than to come up with something entirely new. And we've all seen this in action. You know, someone has a new app idea and they're like, think of it as the Uber of baseball or, you know, <laughs> whatever the example might be. And this hurts us as a species as well, because we'll occasionally be stuck with bad solutions for a long time. And a perfect example here is luggage. Up until the 1970s, all improvements in suitcases aimed to solve the question, how do we make luggage easier to carry? And it wasn't until 1972 when someone came up with the idea to put wheels on luggage. We, we landed the moon before we put wheels on luggage. So Graham, if you're watching, there's no hard feelings. I, I know it was likely a coincidence. It's mathematically plausible that we came up with the same title for the same subject on the same day, only hours apart. However, I can't let you off that easily. It's only fair. I've decided to borrow something from you. It's only temporary though, because it's also mathematically plausible that the person who started the Graham Stephan subreddit is my neighbor. And it's also plausible that he's a very good friend of mine. So as you're watching this video, I'm currently commandeering the Graham Stephan subreddit. I've taken complete control. The name has been changed to Max and Graham Break the Internet. I'm now the moderator. And one thing that's funny about this when I was taking a look at the subreddit is look at the top post in the last month. It seems a little bit poetic. Now, how do we go back to normal? Here's the deal. I will give you back your subreddit. All you have to do is in a future video on your channel, donate $5,000 to Team Seas to help pull plastic out of the ocean. After you do this, I will return the subreddit to normal and I will also personally match your donation of $5,000 to Team Seas. Again, no hard feelings, Graham. You're still the king of finance.